Good morning all. I'm charging supercapacitors again because, well, it's fun. But can you see, I've got a little addition to my supercapacitor block now. And it's this little three cell active balancer. So these supercapacitors are fully charged. I've got a holding current of 170 milliamps. You can see the three lights are on on the protection circuits. So they're all at 2.5 volts each. These are 2.5 volt, not 2.7 volt super caps. Um, so let's turn this off, disconnect my connecting wires, and we'll have a closer look at this little three cell active balancer. So here it is, it's a JW-3S. Uh, I think that's 1.2A for 1.2 amps. It uh, says it can transfer 1.2 amps between adjacent cells. We'll come back to that. This is version 3.0. Uh, it's a 3S battery cell balancing. Now it's on one of these black, matte black it is, but with some glossy conformal coating on it. Uh, board, so I've not been able to sort of reverse engineer the circuit yet, but I do want to, so I might uh, put some effort into doing that at some point. So because this is a three cell balancer, it has four wires, of course. We've got the most negative end, the most positive end, and the two midpoints. Um, it only has two active transfer modules because it can transfer, or you can see from the lights here, one to two and two to three. This wasn't terribly cheap. Um, well, it was about $10. I suppose it's good for what it is. I imagine the price of these will come down in due course uh, as more and more get sold. And you can also get uh, this thing in models from 3Cell, which has the two balancing modules, all the way up, I think, to 17 cells, which would have 16 balancing modules. Now, when I bought this thing, I kind of made assumptions about how this would work. And I was all ready to make a video kind of dissing it, saying, well, it's not very good, is it? But actually, it's brilliant. You see, I'd had a similar idea myself to use little boost converter modules to take the energy from a cell, boost it up and effectively transfer it to the cell higher up the potential ladder. Uh, this cell on the left, well, at the top here, is at the highest potential. It's at the most positive end, and this one is at the lowest potential. And I kind of dismissed the idea um, because it can only transfer energy one way. So if this uh, cell at the bottom end of the potential ladder is the least well charged, there would be no way to transfer it from a cell higher up the potential ladder. Um, but this device, I've discovered, does it in both directions. It's bi-directional, and that's what makes it so clever. So let's see this thing in action. Now, we know that this supercapacitor bank is uh, reasonably well charged. So let's draw some energy out of cell 3. Now, I'm calling this cell 3 because it's at the higher potential end. It's at the most positive end. To draw some energy out, I'm going to use this uh, light bulb. It's uh, from a car, 55 watts at 12 volts. It's probably going to draw about an amp at this sort of voltage, two and a half volts or a bit less, possibly. Stick that on there. That lights up reasonably bright. Now we're waiting for two little LEDs on this board down here, the one to two LED and the two to three. It's cell three that's going to be low. When this sees 100 millivolts of difference between cells two and three, it turns on that light. So we can see that that's come on. I can take that off now. So what it's doing now is it's actively transferring, using some sort of switch mode uh, technique, energy from cell two to cell three. And this is the first test I did on this thing because I was kind of expecting that that's what it would do. And yes, it works. Uh, now, we're not going to be able to really see anything unless I reconnect my charging current to bring all of these supercapacitors back up to uh, fully charged status. It's not really going to interfere with this process uh, that much. And the current I'm using is going to fall and is going to be quite small. So we can see that the lights for cells 1 and 2 are coming back on, so they're back up to 2.5 volts. But this one, because I pulled a load of energy out with this light bulb, 
is still low. Now this board has hysteresis. In fact, I'll bring in the uh, details of this board. It starts the energy transfer when it sees uh, 100 millivolts, 0.1 volts of difference, and it stops it at 30 millivolts, so 0.03. So there was more than 0.1 volt of difference between these two cells when this kicked in. It's now trying to bring cell 3 up until it sees that there's less than 0.03 volts of difference between cells 2 and 3. Now, current. This listing says that, well, in one place it says it can transfer 1.5 amps, and in another place, uh, 0 to 1.2 amps. I have a feeling, because I'm running this thing at a, a voltage very low in its range, it can run anything from 2.2 volts per cell up to 4.5. Is that LED just coming on? No, I don't think it is. Up to 4.5 volts per cell, and that encompasses the lithium range. I think the highest lithium is 4.35, isn't it, for the HV lithiums. But it does just work at the top end of the range of supercapacitors. Um, I think because I'm running down at this low end, I'm getting nothing like 1.2 amps. It wouldn't surprise me if I'm only getting 100 milliamps or so, or maybe a couple of hundred milliamps, because it doesn't seem to really be offsetting this current, which is only 178 milliamps, going into these cells. You'd imagine if this was pulling 1.2 amps, this cell, which is the source cell, would have immediately uh, fallen in voltage and that LED would have gone off, or at least that number would be going up. So yes, I suspect if you're running at these low voltages, you're gonna get very tiny transfer currents. Is that coming on yet? No, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer. So I really need to build a lithium battery pack um, in order to see the larger currents that this thing claims it can transfer. And I am going to be building uh, a lithium battery pack using the cells out of those Wix batteries, which I got very cheap. Uh, ah, right, I think I can just see a faint glow from that supercapacitor. So that's approaching 2.5 volts. These are probably sitting at 2.5 volts, offsetting all this current in their little protection circuits. Did I see that just flicker? I don't know, but shortly when this one uh, reaches 30 millivolts difference to this one, it'll be 30 millivolts lower, this uh, cell transfer unit should shut off and then the balancer has done its work. Now when it does shut off, it goes into standby and it says here that the static power consumption does not exceed 20 microamps. Now I suspect that it's 20 microamps per module. So if you've got, I don't know, a 17S board, and it's quite a large board with lots and lots of these modules, there it's gone off, the light's gone off. So it's brought this cell up to within 30 millivolts of this cell. I suspect it'll be 20 microamps uh, per stage, if you like. So then when I was testing this thing, I thought, okay, let's prove that it's unidirectional by discharging cell one, because I thought there's no way this thing's gonna be able to transfer energy from cell two down to cell one, but it does. So let's have a look at that. Let's put this on cell one, try and get out of the way so we can see what's happening. So we're expecting now the two to one light to come on. And I think they've missed a trick here. I think it would be quite fun if they use different color LEDs to show you the direction. So if it's going from one up to two, you could have say red, there's the red light. And I thought it'd be great if they could have a, say a green LED if it's going from two down to one. I'd have done that if I was designing this thing. So that's what this is doing now. It's reconfigured the switch mode converter in some way. I don't know whether it's still using a boost uh, configuration, but it's rerouted it, or whether they've switched to a buck configuration. That would be more difficult, in my opinion. But whatever they've done, it's now transferring energy from cell two down to cell one. And that's what makes this thing so brilliant. Right, I was waiting for a faint glow to appear on cell one, and then I was gonna rerun the camera. Is that glowing yet? No, but this is actually switched off. I suspect there's a little bit of asymmetry here. It perhaps is slightly more efficient, um, or its measurement is more accurate when transferring one way than the other, but it doesn't really matter. It still has effectively 
transferred energy from cell 2 to cell 1. We're not quite there yet with cell 1, but this has shut off, gone into its standby mode. And that's the lovely thing about this. You can attach this to a pack. Probably supercapacitors isn't the best way to use this, but to a lithium pack so you get the higher uh, current energy transfers. And it just sits there doing its thing, uh, shoveling energy one way or the other to balance the cells. And then it shuts off and goes into its low power standby, 20 microamps or less per module. That still hasn't actually come up. Of course, that's coming up now by the small current that's coming from my power supply. This is no longer doing anything. But uh, yeah, eventually this current, which is being fully offset on these two cells, will start to make this one come on. And you can see that that one's just coming on now. Right, let's go for the uh, units party trick. And that is I'm going to pull down cell two. And um, well, have a think about what you think is going to happen. Let's shove that in there. You can't see all the lights, but it doesn't matter. We're really looking at these lights. Let's see if I can get it so that you can see the LED on cell one. And they've both come on. So what it's doing now is it's actually transferring with one module from cell three down to cell two. And with the other module, it's going the other way. It's transferring from cell one up to cell two. So cell two is getting a double boost, a double transfer from each of its neighboring cells. It's so clever. Now, since it's getting two doses of current coming in, this should actually recover more quickly. But like I say, I think the currents involved at these low voltages, no, that's still not coming up, um, are very tiny. And this thing actually will only work efficiently. Well, no, not efficiently. That's the wrong word. It'll only work at m moderately reasonable currents if it's being used on lithium technology where the cell voltages are that much higher than supercapacitors. Any joy yet? No. Oh, one of them's gone off. And like I say, I've got a feeling this is slightly asymmetric and you'd expect that if this is reconfiguring from say boost to buck in order to do the bi-directional transfers. And that's come back up. We should expect shortly that this probably, this cell's probably a bit low from when I previously discharged it. Uh, is that right? This is a bit low, this is a bit low. They're well matched. No, that should mean that this goes off even quicker. But anyway, when they get within 30 millivolts of each other, that goes off. Job done. So if you build a battery pack and you've got a BMS on it and all the BMS does is does cell monitoring uh, in order to turn off either the charge MOSFET or the discharge MOSFET, but it doesn't do any cell balancing. Well, you simply add one of these into your system and then this does all the balancing for you. And of course it will do it at the top. It'll do it at the bottom and it'll also center balance. Now center balancing, of course, works much better on super caps because they have a a discharge profile where state of charge is approximately equal to voltage or proportional to voltage. Um, lithium ion cells, of course, have a flat center, so center balancing is much more difficult. Um, actually, that gives me an excuse to open this envelope because I have in here, I think this is a five cell BMS. I am looking to get a four cell BMS. Uh, I'll just open that one. Yeah, this is a 5S BMS. Actually looks like it's come out of a power tool because it's got these sort of slide contacts. Um, so I've ordered a 4S BMS because I'm thinking of putting a 4S uh, lithium ion battery pack in my shed, charging it from my 12 volt uh, lead acid system and then having a BMS um, so that I can switch a light on in the shed or do whatever, charge power tool batteries or whatever. And then the BMS will prevent the cells going below their minimum voltage. But I can now add one of these to the system. So I've, I've actually bought a 4S version of this, which will have five wires, of course. Put one of these on so that the cells will also uh, be balanced as well as protected against under voltage, over voltage, over current and all that stuff. And this got me thinking, you could conceivably, if you didn't do it very often, um, build a pack with lots of cells, say seven or eight S pack, and actually draw energy from part of it. So you could draw energy from say three cells to give you 11 or 12 volts for some application. 
thus intentionally unbalancing the pack and then just rely on this thing to put it back in balance. You could do crazy things like that. So just quickly to eBay, um, this is the one I bought from uh, eVision Tech. And you can see, I think this is the uh, 16 cell unit, because you can see there are uh, 16 minus one, one of them's not populated, 15 little transfer circuits there. But you can get everything from, which I don't know whether this actually controls the images. Yes, it does. So there's the 4S with three transfer modules, uh, all the way up to a, uh, where is it, 17S, here it is, yeah. And that will have, well, it's not quite that image, but it'll have 16 little transfer modules. So the prices, the big one is $40, and the little one, the 3S, is about $10. There's a little shipping charge there as well. So there it is, um, the little active cell balancer, which you can get in uh, 3S all the way up to 17S. Oh, and you can actually cascade these. So you can go to any um, S number you want. There's a slight complication where you've got to sort of overlap the uh, cabling because of course, one of these modules is, is looking at these two cells and comparing their voltages. The other module is comparing these two cells. So there's an overlap. So when you cascade these things, the wiring has to be overlapped. But it's relatively straightforward. Yeah, 3S to pretty much any S. And with its party trick of being able to transfer bi-directionally from a cell... Come on, lights, don't fail me now. From cell 1 up to cell 2 and from cell 3 down to cell 2. It's... Genius! Cheerio.